This panel is brought to you by TFAW.com. Visit TFAW.com today and use the code WONDER at checkout to save $5 on your next purchase of $20 or more. TFAW.com. Applause from all the lucky nut lovers out there. And of course, sitting next to Eddie up here on the panel, writer for Green Lantern, Chief Creative Officer of PC Entertainment, Jeff Johns. <laughs> and now I'm going to put the drop back up here. Stuff I, I constantly love reading about comics and 
trying to get my friends in here to say, look, this is good, this is good stuff, this is why I read comics. It's all, a lot of stuff I did, my friend said, okay, you want to get comics? I give them like, Rebirth, Relaunch and Rebirth, a flash of Rebirth, here, read. This is, this is where, where you can really start going, and they go from there, and then hopefully they pick up the rest of these. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, my question is with Green Lantern. I know you're uh, doing the War of Green Lanterns. Um, is this, is like the War of Light finally going to come to a culmination sometime soon, or is this going to be just like your ongoing opus until you retire? <laughs> uh, we, we actually have another story. I mean, introducing all the different core and the emotional spectrum, exploring that. We still, we still have a lot to do. We're going to be doing a lot with with Larflees and uh, his his backstory and um, and more on the Indigo tribe. Uh, Hal's going to eventually go to their home world. It's it's kind of messed up. And um, uh, but we will focus on you know we want to keep the focus on Green Lantern and Hal Jordan, but all the I think all the other core, I really like those other characters, they're fun to work with, and they'll be a part of the mythology from, from here on out. Okay, and one more question. Um, I've been, you said this couple, well, a uh, few comic comments ago, are we ever going to see the, the fight between Dexstar and, and Crypto, or is that just long gone by now? No, no, you'll see it. You'll see it. It has, they're going to have to fight from, from Earth to Owen back, so. And the, and the Orange Lantern, you still haven't heard that either. Woo! You haven't heard it yet. Is that coming soon, or? It's, no, it's, it's gonna come, but Marfleece doesn't want to give it up, so. But okay. you said last year, you were doing the Christmas special. What's that? You said you were gonna put it in the Christmas special. I, I just, yeah, it was only 22 pages, so I didn't have room for it. We have to be Did you like the Christmas special? Yeah! Did anyone make those cookies? Yeah! Yeah, those are pretty sweet, weren't they? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Will the entities get new permanent host at some point? Whose question is that? That's my boyfriend's. Uh, and where is he? Will in Chicago. Oh, he Chicago. was dancing with Dan in Chicago. No, did he tell you the other cool thing he got to do in Chicago? Yes, he did say that. You want to tell everybody? Um, they brought him up on the panel uh, in Chicago. I can't recall which panel it was. It was the brightest day one, and he got to read the first three pages of the 23 before everybody else. That's how nice we are. <laughs> yes, you are. Did you bring it? This time, no. So, so, so the I'm sorry. The question again was: the entities are going to be in somebody or possess other people? Will the entities get new permanent hosts at some point? Well, they have hosts right now. They're taking. That's up. Yeah, they're taking. Uh, they possess the guardians. Um, we'll see where they go after War of the Green Lanterns. Okay, and he has one more. Um, will we see the guardian that the Orange Lantern obtained again? See, yeah, you'll see her. She's off on a special mission for a lot of things. Okay. Thank and it you. caused a lot of trouble. Yeah. Thank you. I think you're such an awesome girlfriend to do this, to come here and read questions for him. You deserve this. Come here. <laughs> become the whole focus of the universe and with all the the past with the heat and Hal being killed in the nineties and this person bastardizing the franchise and <laughs> not my not my words obviously but is it at some point or at least will that be confined to one of the books and maybe like one of the books could be like the whole or it's just the adventures of the core and they don't have to worry so much about being tied into that giant it, it seems like the books are more like guest starring Green Lantern right now. Um, we're, we're, I think we're pretty happy. I mean, that's one of the reasons that War of the Green Lanterns folks is some four guys again, just to get them in the spotlight. But this Green Lantern's big, and I don't want to, I wouldn't want to say this book's only going to be Green Lantern stories. You know, Green Lantern stories are every kind of story. That's why Green Lantern works, because Green Lantern can be an Earth story, it can be a space story, it can involve the core, it can involve the other core, it doesn't have to involve anything. But that's, that's what Green Lantern is. It's, it's not just one thing. Right. Well, I mean, I don't, it should just focus on how or one of them, but just, it seems like it's gotten bigger than, than just the Green Lantern part of like I'm, I'm glad it's big. Well, no, it's good though, it's good. <laughs> and just another question too, um, 
it's, it was teased in the previews with the solicits for the issues we just read these last few weeks. Can we expect one of the Earth Lanterns to be killed off, perhaps? I know you're not going to spoil the story as to... Well, why did you ask the question then? <laughs> just to see if... Just what? Just to see... If I would answer that? No, no, no. Can we expect someone to be killed off? Again, do you expect me to answer that? <laughs> no, but I'm so that. Enjoy the day. All right. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for not just a ton of amazing stories for Green Lantern, but for writing stories that helped me introduce my girlfriend to comics in a way that she reads monthly now. Where is, is she here? Uh, she's in the DC line for autographs. She was trying to get you, and I'm like, it's going to be here, but whatever. <laughs> my question is, Will there be more involvement with the Blue Lantern Corps, or will there be any antagonism between the other cores in the emo in emotional spectrum after War of the Green Lanterns? Yeah, say yes. <laughs> A lot, especially the illegal tribe. Okay. Thank you. What's up, Jeff? What's up? Uh, you brought to life a lot of characters on the show Smallville, such as the JSA and the Legion, and those episodes were, which were awesome, by the way. Uh, if, if you get the opportunity again, uh, what other character would you like to bring to life on this big or small screen? Well, I just wrote a, I just saw the cut of the Booster Gold episode I did um, with Blue Beetle. That turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm really happy with that. That's out in late April. Um, but really, uh, I mean, it's, uh, anything DC, DC, Flash, Wonder Woman, Justice League, all that stuff. I, I couldn't pick a specific <coughs> character because I, I think they all have a lot of potential. Not a favorite character? All my favorite characters. <laughs> so a sequel to Green Lantern, like the Fall of Sinestro or something, that would be cool. Thank you. Actually, wait, if you want to... Oh yeah, hey, hey, wait, come on up and feel this thing. $80,000 to the fence, just kidding. Actually, right here, so, sorry, you wanted to know which Blue Beetle you were going to be using. Some oh, I'm erased. But Ted Cord's also in there. Woo! Well, um, so first off, I would like to thank you, Mr. Jones, for giving me that Superboy Prime drawing on the book, you, yeah, in last year's signings. You're welcome. Yeah, it was a very awesome. My friends liked it, too. Um, and let's see, my first question. So in Blackest Night, I couldn't help but notice um, a lot of places like only actually useful attack was hitting people in the back of the head with his lantern. Oh, he likes to do that. Yeah, just kind of noticed that's like the only thing we did that was actually effective in any way or form. He also made me laugh. Yeah, me too. And um, this is sort of off topic, but will we see crime any time in the future? I'm just curious. Or... Uh, I personally don't have any plans for the character right now. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. But that's not any as far as the DCU is concerned. Oh, okay. Right. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Mr. Johns, welcome okay. to the Bay Area. Um, Thank two you. questions. One real, one uh, off the wall. The real question is at the risk of giving you guys ideas for another Green Lantern series, will we see a Tales of to flesh out a lot of the backstory with all the cores? Will you see tale, more Tales of the different core? Yes. Yes. And the off-the-wall is MOGO, Secret Origin. <laughs> There's actually a lot coming up with MOGO, but it's not exactly the same group. Okay. We've just never had a backstory for him, so... Cool, thanks. Good idea. Don't you want to know who died to give him the ring? That's what I want to ask. Hey, get off the stage. <laughs> oh, my. First of all, how much is that going to sell for? How much is this going to sell for? It's yeah. not for sale. Okay, second question, real question. Has Al Scott, the, the first green ladder from 1940s, going to make any appearance this year anywhere? 
Anywhere you mean in Greenland, the Greenland and titles? Yes. I don't think we have any plans for Alan right now. He's still in JSA. So. Yeah, and he's appearing in JSA right now. Uh, last year, you said that if the, uh, kind of in a jokey way, but you said that if uh, the Larfleet's Christmas special sold well enough, you'd do an atrocitous Valentine's Day special. <laughs> so, are we going to get to see that? Yeah, that's going to be where you see the next star in crypto part. <laughs> probably, uh, probably next year, it all depends on schedule, honestly. Like, I, I'd like to do a couple of these things, but it all depends on schedule. But... Yeah. And uh, I would like to place my personal guest for uh, Larflees' oath. Mine! Give me! Close, but wrong. Dang it! How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Doing great, thank you. A um, couple questions for you. This is going back a ways. Uh, when Cal Raider first got his ring, he was the one ring that did not have the. the uh, just like the ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's. Didn't have the uh, the period where the yellow would affect it. Yep. Are all the new lantern rings? Do they now have a, something again that does not is not affected by yellow any longer? Well, when Kyle got his ring paralyzed, was outside of the battery already, um, and possessed Hal, so his ring worked against yellow. But now there's there's it's kind of a, a natural infection in in the lantern. So as long as you can overcome fear, you can you can break through that. Rookies have a hard time with it once in a while. Okay. And uh, same question, if I may. Any chance for another round between uh, Bruce Wayne and Al Jordan? Yeah. There, yeah, there actually is going. Yeah, there's going to be one. So, yep. No, no holes barred. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no rings, no utility belts. <laughs> hey Jeff. Um. So what's up with the first one? Oh, hey Ryan. How's it going? How's it going, Jeff? <laughs> A uh, oh, okay. little teaser, I think, was that two issues ago? Three yeah, issues that's ago? very intuitive. You'll learn, you'll learn more about the very first lantern later. Soon later? What's that? Soon later? Soon later. Soon, soon later. Soon later. Soon later. Excellent. Before Atrocitus has that Valentine's Day special. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you'll have to kind of see what he does and evolves into in War of the Green Lanterns before I can answer that question. All right. Want to pick this up? Sure. Get over here. <laughs> Check that out. Don't drop it. It'll blow up. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, um, yeah. my question. My question is, um, you mentioned the indigo lanterns earlier. Um, now the rings are known to like, translate the languages so they can communicate with each other. Now, why is it that to the, up to this point we can't understand what the indigo lanterns say, and if they will ever be able to communicate with the other cores as well, so we can read what they're saying? Or, you know. uh, there's a dictionary, or a, there's kind of like a dictionary translator for their language, but that's never going to be published. But you will learn a little bit more about certain words. There's a bit of black slate, I think it's eight, and you can actually translate a few things. In the back of it, there's some text that we put in some of the translations, so if you go back through the book, you can actually pick some things out. And there's stuff about Evan Swear, is there? Something like that? Yeah. Will you, will you sign my orange lantern tattoo? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Don't you want to know where it is first? <laughs> Wait, where is it? Blue Lantern and the 
Justice League. How does it feel to you to see these characters now getting picked up and other writers are essentially taking them to new places? I think it's really cool. I, um, you know, the Red Lanterns are going to be in the new Green Lantern animated series too, which is cool. Like, so I like, I just love, like uh, other people checking those characters out, exploring them. I love Peter Milligan. Peter Milligan is writing a, a new monthly Red Lanterns title that comes out later this year. I think he's a terrific writer. I, I, I'm really excited to see what he does and how much more he explores those characters. So, it's cool. Just nobody's going to do large face. That's all. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, your comment from Hal about Krona being, remember him being taller. Um, my question is, are you going to explain how the Guardians shrunk and when and why they shrunk? Yeah, they didn't try and shrink. They actually just were evolving to some, some new life form. But you will see, you will see more in the backstory of the Guardians and how they did that and why. And also you'll see maybe some of them didn't didn't evolve the same way. So. Um, my second question was, I really love the mythology behind all the entities that was introduced in Blackest Night. What was really the big inspiration for, not to go into too much detail, but the inspiration behind the entities? Um, I'll try not to get too, because I could talk about that, this kind of stuff for a long time, because I mean, I do uh, for hours on end. Um, but it was really just, uh, it goes back to the idea that emotions are so powerful, but like, if you really feel afraid, you can't really quantify it, you can't put it in a glass, you can't say, hey, I, hey you want some fear for $5.99, like, it just doesn't exist. And for me, I thought, well, maybe it does exist, but just not in a way that we can, we can quantify, we can kind of, it's tangible. So, to me, the Guardian's technology really is, this, this technology really, what this does is it captures willpower, it captures, you know, the willpower we use every day, it draws off of it. So we give off this invisible energy and it draws off of it. So I thought that uh, the idea that each one of these emotional powers would, would it, collected, would have some kind of sentient, sentient being that would represent them. So that was, that, that's all. I feel emotions are really powerful and I thought it is a real energy and so let's make it, make it one. Well, thank you to you both for bringing so much life to the series. It's Thanks. been great. Thanks for reading. Like, honestly, guys, like, I'm, like, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for you guys and all like the hardcore fans, we wouldn't have a Green Lantern movie. We wouldn't have an animated series. We wouldn't have all like if you look up, you look at even outside this room, everyone in the con. There's so much Green Lantern stuff, and that I think really helped propel. You know, it certainly helped propel Warner Brothers in DC and everybody involved to to do more Green Lantern things. So thanks for that. market and in terms of your brand extension for Green Lantern is really exciting and I know that you guys are opening some rides at Six Flags Parks across the country this year in two of the locations. How much influence did you have over that process and, and the rides and the theming and, and that? We actually had a lot. Uh, there's a guy named Kevin Canary at DC and who's a big Green Lantern fan and there's actually a ride now where you fly through Parallax like a roller coaster. Ooh, ride. Ride. <laughs> there, I don't know if that's announced yet so <laughs> I don't say anything. But uh, it's really it's actually really awesome. Um, I think it's in New Jersey. And uh, yeah. but the you no know, the detail that they're they're doing and the fact that Green Lantern's actually getting roller coasters wow. named after them is, is pretty So what cool. kind of experience can we expect when we get in line at Six Flags? I don't know, are you from Six Flags? <laughs> no. Uh, it's very official. Just curious. Uh, I don't I, uh, well I know there's just gonna be a lot of Green Lantern stuff leading up to the ride, so. Exciting. I think yeah. it's great. Congratulations. Cool. It's got a big company, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It'll make you sick. <laughs> In a good way. You'll see green. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Hi. One off-topic comment first, as I mentioned in the last panel. I'm really enjoying The Flash, and I'm glad that I can read it with my son. So thank you for that. Thank you. It's, it's the only book that... Uh, it's like a breath of fresh air compared to all the heavy action that the other books have. So it's one I can read with him, which he enjoys. Cool, well, thanks. And going back to Green Lantern, I'm glad that uh, Ivan Reis is doing Aquaman, but does that mean uh, that he is not doing The Secret Origins too? And do we know when on the schedule that book is going to be coming out? Because we're um, looking forward to the fall of Sinestro. Yeah, we will do Secret Origin, Green Lantern Secret Origin 2, the fall of Sinestro. At some point, I'm not sure when we have this. Like we actually have the story already done. 
It's just a matter of schedule. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be coming up. Great, thanks. And can you come up here? I want you to be like the coolest dad when you get back. <laughs> Okay, his son's name's Luke. Is that after Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, it's, he's named after Luke up in the sky. It's a, it's a true story. <laughs> Yeah, this was a big debate in the last panel that everybody feels like he's actually I'm allowed to go in, which I can't say. Like, he said, like, he had one big hit and then he's kind of been pumped out ever since. Yeah, yeah well, wait to meet his wife. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he would never get married. My girlfriend has a question, too. Oh. Little Hal wants to know if he can come up and charge his ring. Sure. <laughs> So my question is basically this. Can I take a picture of you guys in the lantern? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, after, after the panel, sure. Right. No, not everybody. <laughs> I'm a little boy who's five years old. Sure. Also, would that little boy want like this awesome white lantern Batman? What? <laughs> I'm being told it's available exclusive from Graffiti Designs. Do not come in. No, are you reading comments? How's it going? Good, how's it going with you? All right, so I'm fairly a new reader of the Green Lantern series, but I grew up watching uh, Justice League on Cartoon Network and all the uh, old Bruce Tim uh, comic book uh, animated series like Batman and Superman. But I have a question in regards to the movie. Uh, will the ring actually speak as it did in the comics? And, like, is it origins? Or? No, the ring, the, the ring, well, the ring doesn't actually talk like it does in the books. I mean, the, the, the movie, I have to say, the movie is so close to the comics, like the mythology and the characters, the designs, and these kind of stuff, but um, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing how close it is. So again, comment 5 o'clock, please. Yeah. Not we, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in, 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 in. Yes, And since you're a new reader, I think you've totally got to read Green Lantern's Secret Origin. <laughs> a lot, could you say a lot of the movie kind of inspired? Or? Yeah. This is great stuff by Jeff and Ivan Reese. Thanks, man. Have you read it? Then you have to. <laughs> oh, right now. <laughs> He's got this. If you haven't seen it, it's a new cover we did with Ryan on the Ryan Reynolds on it. Really, there's just such cool stuff. And when um, Ivan was on the set, he couldn't believe how close everything was and stuff he got inspired. Yeah, if you look at like when you watch the film, if you look at the Evan Sir ship, um, it's actually a lot of the, like the, the whole seats based on what Ivan did and. Secret Origin, there's a lot of details that they took directly from his art. It's pretty cool. Hey, Ian. Um, uh, another couple questions I have was, now that we've had the Black Lanterns and there's the White Lantern, are we going to be seeing like a Grey Lantern or a Prism Lantern or something with all of the ranks? A Grey Lantern? Yeah. <laughs> all ranks? Uh, you, might, you might see somebody with all the ranks on it. Was in Blackest Night, we saw. And their costume will be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, Blackest Night, we saw Superman and Batman fighting. Um, and Jonathan Crane, he got the uh, yellow ring. Um, are we going to be seeing any comic books with him for, and other further points with um, the yellow ring and him terrorizing people with it? Uh, would you want to see that? Yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> How many people would like to see more untold tales of Blackest Night? Well, think about it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Great work, love everything. Decades worth of dreaming gone into the movie alone is a great achievement, so thank you very much. I have to nitpick one small question that's been bothering me. Go ahead. The whole decharging, recharging, yellow rings, interacting with red rings, all that, when they got in close proximity to each other in some of the later Black Sky books, didn't seem to ever happen. Uh, that's because Indigo, well, they, you'll, you'll learn more about Indigo and what their rings do to the other rings. Cool. Thank you much. Okay. So, well, in Black Night, uh, there was a scene where Atrocious was hanging out with Brother Walker, and he had that dream where he saw himself as a Blue Lantern as well as his wife. Is that going to happen, or was that just a... That's something he hopes never happens. Huh? But it might be something that happens. You have to read Red Lantern's script for that. Hey guys, a while back there was a, a fan trailer for Green Lantern with Nathan Fillion as... Yes! as <laughs> Why is he not Green Lantern in the movie? Yes! Well, he's, in, he's actually the voice of the Green Lantern uh, in Emerald Knights, the upcoming uh, rise, but you guys gotta see, like, Ryan kicks ass. You gotta see, you gotta see, come at 5 o'clock. I can't be Green Lantern. I really want everybody to come at 5 o'clock. I know there'll be a long line, but it'll be worth it. I just want to say the battle between Sinistro and the Weapon of Keyword was badass. Yeah, Tony yeah. Pedrard's doing a great job on, on core. Tony and Pete are both, like, we work with them really close. War of the Lanterns in this big war room. Um, we painted the walls green. 
Uh, but it was, but we had a really good time plotting it off. I think those guys are doing a killer job. Yeah. Uh, are you guys ready for the United Corps? Yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Animal Warriors. Yeah. Look what's happening with Guy. Some interesting choices for Guy. I told my cover spoils way too much. But... <laughs> no, because they can't see behind me. Oh, all right. What's that mean? I don't want to talk. Jeff Johns, I just want to say uh, it was because of you that I started reading comics all together. I thought the whole idea of Blackest Night was just super awesome. Thanks. And the, uh, the free comic book day solicit for that is just really what tied me into the whole thing. And I also want to thank you for your writing across the years, starting at like Identity Crisis. You made me actually care about a lot of the characters. And the I, didn't, I didn't write that, but thanks. Well, <laughs> contribution, whatever. You, the, your writing overall has made me care about a lot of the characters that really wouldn't have otherwise. And thanks. I just want to thank you. Appreciate that. That's it. Oh, you got a club here. Thank you. A nice white lantern flash. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I'm new to all this, and I'm more of a movie buff. And I was wondering if there was something that I could read up on before I saw the movie to help me um, understand it more. Uh, well, Green Lantern Secret Origin, which we just gave away the last copy of, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Um, so after a word of Green Lanterns, can we expect you to start revamping old villains again? Like, um, like maybe Eagle Star or somebody? Uh, you'll see new stuff, actually. I think one thing we want to do is just move forward with a lot of new things. Like uh, one of the things I loved about Green Lantern in the last few years is that most of the new characters, like St. Walker and Arfleys and all that stuff, is it's brand new. So we want to keep exploring. There'll be there'll be older characters that are getting reinvented, like Necron and Krona, but we do want to explore the new as well. And um, this is kind of more off topic, but if you could describe your take on Aquaman in one sentence, what is it? Like, what would that be? In one sentence, my take on Aquaman. Yeah. I really don't want to. Have it. I can do it one word, tough, like, that's it. Or orange. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be here tomorrow because I have a White Lantern Captain Boomerang costume? I will be, and I look forward to seeing that. Perfect. <laughs> hey, Batman. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> On that topic, actually, uh, we've seen Batman wear the green ring, uh, the yellow ring, the white ring, and kind of a black lantern. Are we ever going to see him wear the red one? Maybe. That'd be cool. Yeah. Makes sense. You want to, I got to see Batman holding the green lantern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to think, yeah, Batman should get a little Batman. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to share it with Satan. Kyle as Ion again. Woo! Kyle Ross! 
there's a, there's a chance to see a lot of different things. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's always a chance. Hello again. Um, hey, I know with the last point coming up, um, you guys have already are solicited how, like, how does the powder get the rain, having a serious shifting crash. Is Flashpoint itself going to affect the overall Green Lantern books, or is it really like Flashpoint can be kind of self contained like, here's this, but everything else is still going wrongly, and then, like, how Final Night, what well, the Final Price was, where it sifts down later, was it just going to be that? We can't, we can't really talk about what, what happens after Flashpoint. Well, it's not been after Flashpoint, but, like, is the books going to be like, 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 like if I'm reading Green Lantern, all of a sudden, then the story I'm in, the story I'm in, the story I'm in, is getting good, and all of a sudden, boom, Flashpoint time. No, you'll be able to enjoy what you're enjoying right now at Green Lantern, and then Flashpoint comes. Yeah. And then other stuff comes. But also there's a Flashpoint Hal Jordan, which is very interesting, because of what happens with the Flashpoint Avon Sewer. Okay. So definitely pick those up if you like your Green Lanterns. Thank you. Yep. I guess. I was wondering in the last issue of Green Lantern, we see Cronus come in uh, into the Guardians with the chained entities. Is there a reason that only the Parallax is chained with his own yellow energy and the rest are green chains? Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so um, I've always had like a passion for sports, hobbies and whatnot. Um, and I just recently discovered comics. Um, Whoa, I just, how'd you discover them? <laughs> uh, my friend's right over there, a guy that he's at. Those guys over there. <laughs> Um, but they, they introduced me to the Life is Night, and I've got to say, man, you've really fueled my passion for comics. Thanks. I just, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you have to share this with all of them. <laughs> Scarecrow, and there was a big debate among 
internally among all of us, and eventually it just well, it's like Joker's great, but it felt like it's like Mara, like Scarecrow doesn't get a lot of a lot of attention and spotlight, and, and it's, so we really wanted to explore him. Oh, one more. Uh, we really wanted to explore him in that way, but there wasn't. We almost had to get a letter Joker, so maybe we'll revisit that someday. If it makes sense. Right, we're only allowed one more question. Two more. Make, make, make it, I was gonna say make this quick. Real quick, is there going to be any other? Oh, we can do. We can do two. Come back up. Are there going to be other, any other Elseworld books coming out involving Green Lantern, or...? No. Not Elseworld, but we have Flash. Flash, Flash. On the scale of dream to plan to reality, how far was, on any kind of comic or plans for, like, including the emotional spectrum into, like, a live or comic or cartoon movie? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Is there any dreams or plans you guys would have towards getting some of the emotional spectrum rings into, uh... Well, the, 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 animated, the animated series, Parallax is in the movie. Uh, the animated series features the Red Lanterns and more. So, yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for coming out. Bye. Brought to you by Tifa.com, the world's best online retailer of comics and collectibles. Whatever you're into, we've got just the thing for your collection.